the Lord will make you a house. We learn three things from this conversation between David, Nathan and God. First, it is that we do not invite God into our presence. Rather, God comes alongside us, where we are, hiking through the wilderness. God gets down into the dust with us and puts up a tent. There is a reason why John made so much of this tent language in his first chapter, that the word became flesh and pitched his tent among us. Whichever part of the Bible we are reading, we see God coming to the people, rather than the people moving towards God. This is of particular comfort when we feel like we haven't prayed enough or regularly. We might have been distracted by the dust on our feet, but God has always been there right beside us. We just have to look up. Second, it is that God's presence among us is not something to be feared. Have you noticed that while driving, if a police car is part of the traffic, everyone starts to drive sensibly? That is the fear of the presence of authority. But God is not to be feared like that. A holy fear is a loving respect, not a craven terror. God came to the people living in tents, pitched a tent himself, and is now going to upgrade their living quarters to a solid house. This is a loving generosity on God's part towards us. God with us means blessings upon blessings. Finally, what kind of house is God building? Here in Second Samuel, it seems like David begins talking about a house made out of wood, but then God responds with using the word house more like a royal lineage, for example, the house of Windsor. God uses this as a segue into a prophecy about the coming of the Lord Jesus, who is the king in the line of David, whose reign will never end. Jesus is the good king, who will protect his people in a land just for them, a peaceful and a happy land. God the Father will love God the Son, and there will people from all over the world adopted into this heavenly family to live in this house God has made. And since we are adopted sons and daughters of Father God, who live in the house he has made, who will condemn us? Jesus doesn't. This house God has made for us is a happy home, in which we shall live forever. 